Despite all the hype, the great American eclipse has come and gone in a matter of two minutes. But I think young Pete here at five years old summarized it best, picking him up from kindergarten today. What now? Today? Um, when it was eclipsed, um, we went outside with these special glasses. You did? And then we looked at the sun. You did? It looked like the moon. Really? Like a crescent shape? Mm -hmm. Cool. And that was a solar eclipse. You saw it today at school? Mm -hmm. There's your report from Deer Creek Elementary from Pete Brown, five years old. That's all there is to it, solar eclipse. But that didn't stop the rest of us from gathering up all our photographic equipment and heading out here in Northern California to have a shot at it, where we anticipated about 80% totality. It's Monday the 21st of August, time for the Great Eclipse and aging hippies everywhere are turning up the volume to the Pink Floyd soundtrack to Dark Side of the Moon as they chase the eclipse all the way across America. So to avoid the maddening crowds today, we've just picked up a top secret undisclosed location here in Northern California near my hometown overlooking the American River. We'll also have a chat with my old friend, aviation photographer Tim O'Brien who specializes in long lens photography and has rigged up a very special lens for today's event. That's him over there now working. We'll see if we can get an ed a word in edgewise with him. Also joining us today is Tim's sister Sharon O'Brien who is also, well photography is all over that family and she specializes in what horses and landscapes and that sort of thing but she also does some great aviation photography and you saw her work in that recent wallfire video update of the tanker landing at sunset at Nevada County Airport. Great work, Sharon, thanks. My name's Juan Brown and you're watching the Blanco Lirio Channel. All right, Tim, what do you see there now? Well, we're seeing about a, uh, about a third coverage right now. Okay, so tell us about your long <laughs> lens setup. What do you call this, the toilet plunger? Well, Sharon calls it the plunger. Uh -huh. uh, what it is, it's a, a 1300 millimeter Bauer Ooh. Uh, totally manual lens. It uh, really, yeah. It's actually like a like a Celestron telescope with a camera mount on it. Really, yeah. It's really heavy and awkward and shaky, and uh, I couldn't find a filter for it, so I took a Litton glass blowing lathe chuck faceplate. Yeah. Took apart a pair of welding goggles, <laughs> and I taped that on to the end here, and it's working beautifully. We're getting really good really? sharpness, clarity. We're getting sunspots and everything out of here. And what's the body, a Nikon? Uh, this is a Nikon D90. D90, all right. And then this camera here, this is a 500 millimeter um, uh, lens with a multiplier, so it's actually about 650 millimeters. This filter is homemade from the top of a yogurt tub. <laughs> it looks like a piece of plastic, all right. And a really cool, and it too is delivering incredible clarity. and. Uh, moon spot or sun spots and the whole thing but the really cool thing is is when the when the eclipse gets at the apex you just whip this off reset ah, your settings here uh -huh. and everything and we'll get that hopefully that really nice lunar detail let's right in front of this let's take a look at this high-tech thing so that's a piece of uh, welding uh welding, welding goggle right there yeah. just taped on to uh, a yogurt top <laughs> <laughs> that happens to fit right uh, nicely. No, yeah, it's right here. on there. Uh -huh. um, I'm also shooting a 28 millimeter remotely. Yeah, right there. Okay. Every once in a while, and then I've got a uh, fisheye down here. Jeepers creepers! So you got four cameras. Which is, uh, when you get into this audio visual stuff, it just never ends. He's a frequent flyer at B and H. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in New York City. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's 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 looking really good right now. Um, oh, you know we got. Every bit of a third coverage, the moon is coming straight down. It's coming down the from sun. the top, huh? Yeah. And so we'll be I... adding some of Tim's pictures to this here. And here in Northern California, of course, we're only expecting about 80% totality, but we're avoiding the crowds. <laughs> Tim and I have collaborated on a lot of projects over the years, starting all the way back in high school with uh, getting in trouble on dirt bikes right around these railroad tracks in the local area. We then got into chasing air shows and air races all around the west coast here where now Tim is an accomplished aviation photographer and pylon photographer at the Reno National Championship Air Races. And Tim and I together announce a series of small air shows here on the west coast. And they've got your expensive eclipse glasses on the uh, inter interwebs, <laughs> but you just a good old pair of welding goggles or welding mask works just as well. Yes. 
stick with it. Oh yeah, it's as clear as day. <laughs> it's a total, even even with the cloud there, with a, it's a total crescent moon shape from the top. But these things work perfect. Jenny, did you get a look at this? Tim then hooked me up with one of his custom welding glass filters. Tim's day job is working at Litton Engineering as a machinist rebuilding glass working lathes. It's good to hang out with the smart kids. Okay, look at that. We got some video of the Eclipse with the Canon T6i camera using Tim's custom welding goggle attachment. Amazing. Thanks, Tim. We put that on a tripod. Okay, there she is on the Canon T6i manual with Tim's custom welding goggle attachment. And just hold it still enough with the mono stick here. Northern California. What what's the time check right now? 10:08. Okay, we're getting close to as good as it's going to get here in California. Now one interesting thing to watch during an eclipse is the shadows. With the crescent shape of the sun, the shadows start to uh, split and diffuse. As the eclipse continues, you want to see, watch these shadows. Crescents. Hey Jenny, come on up here. It's kind of mimicking the crescent yeah. shape of the sun. Exactly. It's, um, broken up the leaves. Refraction, diffusion. We'll have to look up the technical explanation here. It turns pine trees into palm trees. Every eclipse is a perfect example of geometry. What makes this eclipse so special? Well, the radius of the sun is about 400 times larger than the radius of the moon. But the distance of the sun from planet Earth is about 400 times farther away than the distance of the moon. So from here on Earth, the sun and the moon appear to be the same size. But the moon's orbit around the Earth is elliptical, so some moons appear to look larger than others. For example, harvest moons and hunter's moons appear to look larger than other moons, as they are closer to the Earth. Now about every month or every 29 and a half days, we experience a new moon. But the shadow of that new moon rarely hits planet Earth. Why? Because not only is the moon's orbit elliptical, it's also off plane by about five degrees or so. So there's only two nodes in that orbit that can align just right for that moon shadow to cross planet Earth. So most eclipses are either a partial eclipse or an annular eclipse. That means you can see the big ring around the sun as the moon is slightly smaller than the sun. But for this eclipse, the great eclipse, the moon is close enough in its elliptical orbit to provide a total eclipse all the way across the United States, casting a shadow of totality nearly 60 miles in diameter. As the Earth rotates under the moon's shadow, it takes about 90 minutes from Salem, Oregon to Charleston, South Carolina, a distance of 2,500 miles at a rate of about 1,600 miles per hour. Totality lasted about two minutes on the west coast and about two minutes and 40 seconds on the east coast. 
Alaska Airlines chartered this special flight to chase the eclipse, but at 35,000 feet, you could see both ends of the 60 mile diameter shadow of the moon and therefore see daylight or sunlight underneath that shadow. Whereas the folks on earth got total darkness. Well, I think that about does it for the great eclipse of uh, 2017, huh? Yeah, it's <laughs> winding down pretty good. We got about, about the last third of it coming down. Yeah. You can, yeah, awesome. You, you can hear the, uh, as the sun gets brighter again, you can hear the tracks warming up and clicking, huh? Yeah, it got darker and it got a little bit cooler. A little cooler, yeah, so yeah. You got the rails expanding and everything like that, so yeah. That must be it. Awesome well, morning. we saved us about a 200 mile round trip by just shooting it right here from Northern California. We'll share those pictures with you here and we'll gather some more pictures from around the uh, planet and see what it looked like. Thanks for being here, Mark. All right, thanks for inviting me, Tim. Awesome. All right, let's do it again. Yeah. Here's some of those images that Tim O'Brien and Sharon got with their big lenses in our top secret undisclosed location here in uncrowded Northern California on the day of the great 